I come back well, to I guess, yes. I guess that's really the question, right? And we intervene in Kosovo, though, without approval because we recognize that sometimes we have to. So I guess the question is, how many people need to die? How many people do they need to kill before we're going to do something about it? David Starkey. Kosovo was a disaster. Kosovo and the Balkans are now a series of United Nations protectorates. They are ungovernable and unsustainable as states. Humanitarian intervention is almost always disastrous. Let me give you an example. It's called France. You will remember Britain and America liberated France. What thanks did we get for it? The French have spent the last 40 years trying to obliterate the shame by doing everything they can to damage Britain and America. Well, no, 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 no D-Day, no invasion. Of, we should left it for the Russians to sweep no, no, across no, no, Europe. No, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just what, saying. What are you no, saying? What I'm trying to do is to illustrate that people don't like being freed. They tend to mistake, they, no, they mistake liberators for conquerors, which is exactly what's happened in, in Afghanistan, which is exactly what's happened in Iraq, which is you know, a testament of shame to Britain and America, of, of utter disgrace. And it would be exactly what would happen in Syria. You go in, you become the enemy. Only one person can make you free. It is yourself. Only a country can free itself. The French freed themselves in their revolution. We didn't have humanitarian intervention to save Louis XVI. But so sorry. Are you serious to say, I'm sorry, just to get, uh, nail the point, are you saying there should have been no allied invasion of no, France? No, I'm not, David. To, to, the, to the, remove uh, we, the Germans? We didn't go into France to liberate France. We went into All France right. to destroy Nazi Germany. What I'm trying to do, <clears> if, David, you will occasionally detach your mind from your prompt sheet and listen to what people are saying. <laughs> what I was saying was, people do not like being liberated. The French had to invent a myth of their own liberation. And it's exactly the same in Afghanistan, it's exactly the same in Iraq. It is, thank God, we did it lightly enough in Libya. Um, but sorry, we have this weird notion, exemplified above all by the you know, divinely ordained Tony Blair, that you go and give people freedom. All right, I think we have like the point. Thank you very much. Like the man in the third row there. The in, the, in the blue. Man in the blue pullover. If, if you're saying that, do you not think that um, the three people that died just to save one person who went into um, Homs to take pictures and um, do a job, do you not think those three pe um, people's families are going to suffer due to the fact of I was rescuing one person? Rachel Reeves. Well, I mean, I think that if we're going to intervene in Syria, we have to be pretty certain that we're going to be able to make a difference. And I'm not convinced as Clark says, that we would be able to make that difference for the better if we intervened in Syria for the reasons that he said, but also without the support of the United Nations, without the support of the Arab League, without the support of the region, I don't think that... Without the support that that, of the Syrians? I don't think that that will make, uh, make a difference. Uh, and, and so, you know, I reluctantly, I don't think we can intervene militarily. But I think today the United Nations uh, and the Red Cross have got... Uh, access and hopefully access will come in the next few days for a humanitarian mission and I hope that that will start to make a difference and will start to get the support to the people in Homs that they so desperately need at the moment and we've okay. all seen the pictures on the television it's devastating and if that can make some difference then hopefully that will make it better for the people who are there. Jo Swinson. Well everybody will have been moved by the pictures that they've seen and it's quite right and at least some good news that humanitarian aid may now be able to, to go in following the Security Council's resolution today. But I don't think we should intervene militarily, partly for the, the reasons that have been outlined by Clark. It's not something that you enter in too lightly. And you have to be confident that you can improve things and make it better. Now, I was a strong supporter of the action we took in Libya, where we had uh, the key... Uh, things that we had in place were that we had support of the population, we had the support of the Arab League, we had the United Nations resolution and we just need to look as David alluded to of the mess that we got into, the terrible mess 
of the folly of going into Iraq without a United Nations resolution. We shouldn't be making that mistake again. What we can be doing, short of military action, as well as supporting the humanitarian effort, is continuing the work that we're doing, supporting and capacity building for the Syrian National Council, helping with training about how to make sure that uh, the, the documentation is taken of the human rights abuses, so that hopefully at some point in the future, when there is a change in Syria and a, a transition can actually take place in a, in a measured way, that the people that are responsible for these appalling and despicable acts can finally be brought to justice. And I think that has to be the way that we move forward rather than repeating the mistakes of the past. Thank you. Uh, you, sir, on the left. I just fail to see the difference between the Libya and Syria. We intervene in Syria, whereas in, uh, sorry, we intervene in Libya, whereas in Syria there is the same problems. There is a dictator, there is a, a breaches of human rights, and the civilians are being killed. So why don't we intervene there? Okay. And, and the man up there with spectacles. Me. You, sir. Yes. Surely the answer is to put political and economic pressure on Russia and China to make them agree with the United Nations. Yeah, well, John that. Redwood, what do you think I mean, the difference is between Libya? What an absurd remark. What pressure can we bring to bear on China? John Redwood. Don't have to think there. John, John Redwood. For God's sake. So we're trying to deal with the, the previous point, David, about yeah. what is the difference between uh, Libya and Syria. And there are several differences. The first is that in the case of Libya, there was a United Nations resolution. The second is there was a more formed and united opposition with some military prowess and ability. Uh, and the third is that it was more accessible and easier militarily. So there were three things that gave uh, our forces a chance, and they did a very good job to support very brave people who were already there uh, at a considerable scale as an opposition. Those conditions are not meant, and so in Syria we could make the thing a lot worse. We could kill a lot of people without managing to produce Don. a great opposition. Well, David, yeah, David, yeah, David, just one second. Hold on a second, because David. This is hold, a on, really, David. No, this hold on, David. This man, hold on, David. He the raised man, a really just important wait. point. All right, wait Let's a moment. An just there. be patient and wait. The man there in the check shirt. Isn't the danger that we try to impart our own ideologies Absolutely. on these countries? And Absolutely. bluntly, it doesn't work. All right. Quite. David Starkey, briefly right. if you can manage. Two points. You are absolutely right. Underpinning the absurd doctrine of humanitarian intervention is that everybody wants to be a right-on, liberated man or woman with a flag hanging out of the one corner and a bottle swinging at another. The world isn't like that. People want different things, and we need to recognize it. The key point, the key difference between Syria and Libya is that in Syria, you have a united regime with an extremely powerful and well-organized army and secret service. Gaddafi deliberately divided and ruled and had a very weak army. This is, this is the key difference. You would face an entirely different level of military opposition in Syria. Okay. Time's up, I'm afraid. Apologies to those who've got your hands up still.